Today on Real Life, reflecting on the past two weeks of ministry on family time. Helpful information about hormones on living well. Dr. Ron Moore begins a new teaching series on the seven minute word. And Christ for All Nations President Daniel Kalinda. Today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black. I'm here with my wife, Terry. Oh, Terry. I found a Norma Bixler, our, our pastor, Gary Mitrick, chairman of the board, and our CFO, Mr. Tom Scott. New on the set. Yes. We're glad that you're here. I'm glad to be here. It's, it's, we're coming out of two weeks of special programming, out of our family time program, where we experienced just a tremendous flow of the Holy Spirit, Pastor. Yes, we did. It was, it was, it was powerful. You know, I, I thought that uh, the worship was so rich. Oh, yes. It oh, really yes. was. You know, we had, we had Lindell Coley and then Jaron Davis and Kindred Souls, and we had the Binions, and then, of course, the whole second week, we had Keith Duncan in the throne zone, and... It was just like every time we, we got into a program, we just took us into the presence of the Lord, and good things always happen yes, when absolutely. the Lord shows up. That's right. That's right. Well, Norma, I, I uh, wanted to ask you for your reflections on it. What, what's, your, what's your thoughts back over the last two weeks? Well, I thought it was rather grueling. <laughs> 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 but <clears throat> that's, that's what we had to do, and we did it. You know, we had our anniversary. And that was wonderful. And I thought our family time was wonderful too. Mm -hmm. And I liked the, all the guests. They all did their best. And um, it was exciting, really. It really was. It was. Now, we want to, I also want to mention that in between the family time and the 35th anniversary special, we had our prayer walk. And so that was really, that was really a really powerful time. You know, we walked around Cornerstone and prayed, and, I, and it was just a great time of unity. So we got to keep our walking to going here. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I'll go with you. Okay, good, good. Uh -huh. Well, the prayer walk was, was a special time, a special mm -hmm. time of people coming together. But, you know, the family time that we had, there was an anointing of God on, mm -hmm. on that two-week period. It, the messaging from the speakers, none of them talk to each other. Right. I mean, that not, they don't coordinate. And the Holy Spirit gave us a message through that first week and then continued it on into the second right. week mm -hmm. that has to be encouraging to our, to our viewers. If you watched many of the programs, you could see a thread of yeah. God in it. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that encourages me. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Larry Huck, you know, he came with such a, timely message of course we just had the first of four blood moons mm -hmm. and talked about the passover seed which we're still in yes, we are. you know mm -hmm. and it th th there was just an anointing i believe not only on the message but i think on the timing of the message it was just right. a divine appointment mm -hmm. it really was mm -hmm. right. well and many of those speakers had was in that same prophetic voice yes. of these are the end or the time mm -hmm. is closing in that was the message I heard, Nora. Well, I, I was, I'm so thankful for our prayer partners. Mm -hmm. You know, they were very busy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was exciting to look over and see them praying. And, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people ca call for prayer, but That's right. a lot of people became, can I tell? <laughs> a lot of people became new partners. Yay. I, know. I, know. I was partners. believing God for at least 600. Well, we're going to get to that number in just a second. Don't Aww. get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> We've got it all stacked. You're letting the spirit lead. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm letting the spirit lead. Well, that's what, um, that's what our prayer partners are the center of, of, right. of, of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And that's when right. that room's alive, when the, call, the phones are ringing and they're ministering and talking to people, it's just like a heart. It, it just, is. It just yeah. is a pulsing room. 
Tom, you've been in there. I mean, many times you post in there. That's Absolutely where you work not. out of. It's, uh, it's really the heart of the ministry. And, uh, you know, as people call in and respond uh, to the leading of the Spirit, it's exciting to see. And uh, people responded not only for prayer, but also to become partners and new partners as well. Well, you know, in one of Russell's books, our artist that we used to have here, uh, she's with the Lord now, but when he did his book, she did the illustrations. And when he talked about the prayer partners, he had, a, had her draw a lady with a tear because you can look and and see that happen because they're very caring people. Yeah, they are indeed yeah. called. Well, they're called. Right. They're called by God to do this. This isn't a casual thing for them. They come in prepared and night after night get in front of the phones and sit there and not know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, but God anoints them every time. I think of some of the ministry that happened too. Mm -hmm. Some of the ministry of people calling in and being healed and the testimonies of the healings and testimonies of people calling and asking Jesus to be their Savior. Amen. I mean, that's just a, that's, and, they, and people talk, why do they have these special uh, two weeks and it's just all about fundraising? Well, it's not all about fundraising. That is part of what we do. I mean, that's part of the way we take up, if you will, an offering for the ministry here. But God uses that, that time in powerful ways. And he did, you know, he did. And I, I also just believe that we're going to hear a lot of answers to prayer from yes. people that mm -hmm. were ministered mm -hmm. to over those two weeks because, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit was really flowing through a lot of those speakers. And I just believe a lot of rich and fruitful ministry went forth. I really do. Yes. A lot of people that called in were praying for breakthroughs. Yes. And Amen. I remember mm -hmm. especially the last night about people were praying for their household so, yeah. Yes, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we're going to see what was it? Ten months of before we would see breakthrough and joy. Amen. That was one of the prophetic that was one words. Of the, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. the ten months. Well, that God, God moved in those times, and He continues to move. He continues to move in today's program. The, mm -hmm. the Lord doesn't just do something in special programming; He does it all the time. We're seeing people come to know Jesus on all of the uh, the uh, real life programs. I just appreciate our <laughs> staff too. They work. Very hard. They sure do. Well, and you're getting, we're getting calls from as far away as Hawaii and L London, England and all that. So oh, that's I really knew about London. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. People calling from all over the place. I guess maybe that's a good segue to get into the actual numbers of, sure. of the calls. And yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be the drum roll person for the total number of calls that I came in. I can be in. a drummer. But, <laughs> okay. but we had over 8,000 people call. Yes. Absolutely. During that two week period. All right. 8,000 people called, resulting in 10,607 prayer wow. requests. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you got more prayer requests than you got people. Well, some people have more than one prayer request. Mm -hmm. So, so that's how that works. And here's, here to me is one of the big <coughs> drum roll numbers. Mm -hmm. 23 people yes. came to know Jesus as their Savior. Okay. Right. That's why we're here. 23 people came to know the Lord as their Savior. And we had 36 what we call praise reports. So <coughs> praise reports are healing, testimonies of healing or physical demonstrated miracles mm -hmm. in, their, in their lives. Yeah. So praise God for that. And then mm -hmm. the last one I have in my list is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Eleven people mm -hmm. called and prayed to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which, which is the next step after receiving Jesus is to go mm -hmm. into the, into the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. getting empowered by Amen. this. Thank by you, the Lord. Spirit. Amen. Praise well, God. Tom, tell us about the financials. Sure. Um, well, I'll start out with just the breadth of where we heard from. Uh, we heard from 32 different states. Um, the top three states were Pennsylvania, New York, and California. California. Yeah. California. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's what you so, just said. Uh, and the next was uh, we heard from 516 different cities. The top three there were uh, Pittsburgh, Altoona, Johnstown area, and New York City. All right. And uh, we heard from three Canadian provinces, Quebec, Alberta, and way out there in Saskatchewan. Oh, really? So, <laughs> so that was exciting. And then the number of pledges we had was, was really exciting to see. We had 2,800 pledges right. during, the, during the family time. And here come the new partners. The new partners was 731. All right. 
bring that there. Welcome. That's right. Welcome. So on that, I just want you to know that anointing's on you because Don did a terrible job ringing the bell on Friday. I tried. Don. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I can't. What can I say? It, that's your ministry. I don't, I don't have to, the mantle of belling is not on top of me. Well, you know, years ago. I just started ringing the bell because that was the only thing I could think of to celebrate, you Absolutely. know. And so I've had several different bells, but I guess this one's just my bell. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song, isn't it? No, never mind. But I'm, glad you, I, I, I'm glad that you were able to ring it. Well, I had to try. I tried. <laughs> you did your best. But I'm glad you're back here to ring it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're excited for all those new partners, and uh, you know it's great to see the family growing. And we're very grateful for all the pledges. And the pledge total from this two weeks was one million one hundred thirty-nine thousand seven hundred thirty-four dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so we're grateful to God and grateful to everyone who pledged. And uh, well, it's and just many, good. Many of you who are watching are part of our family, and you've made a gift to the ministry. You've made a pledge. Perhaps you made a pledge. I just want to remind you that. Making a pledge is your first step, and then after you've made the pledge, then you need to fulfill the pledge. I call them faith promises, because you make a promise because God's put it on your heart. Now, fulfill it. Put that out of the, uh, I want to do it, into the I did it category, and then watch what God will do in your life. It's, that's, that's, that's what is exciting, to watch him take our little and make much out of it. And the uh, address is on the screen for if people want to even jot that down. Right. And it's Cornerstone Network, 1 Signal, Signal Hill, Hill Drive, Drive Wall, Wall, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania 1548-1499. <laughs> that was in stereo. <laughs> and I just want to add that if you missed it, maybe you were on vacation, you didn't know what was happening, you could still call. Sure you can. That's and you right. could call 888-665-4483 sure now. Call any time. Okay. Well, and if you're one of the 700, what was the number, 731 new partners or members in our family, we want to welcome you again. Yes, that's We're right. We're so glad that you're part of the family. There's value in being part of the family, and you're going to get some information in the mail. Watch your mail. We send you some special information about Cornerstone and about how we minister in you, to you and through you. And we, again, welcome you to, to the family. And could I just thank the, my prayer team for praying? Oh, sure. I just appreciate you praying so much. And uh, I, I sent you a message last week, so keep praying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> lifted Amen. it up. Well, we have a special Mother's Day. I know. This coming uh, Thursday and Sunday. It's awesome. The Woman of Valor program. We're really excited about that. Well, do you, you want, want to? Do you, you want, want to me tell to? Tell us a little to? bit about it. Oh well, we invited um, the women of valor. Um, we had a lot of nominations, and it was just a challenge for us to select it. It was. It was, wasn't it? So um, what we did, we invited all the nominees and all the nominators to come and be part of the program. And then the two women that we selected, they were featured on the uh, Mother's Day program that we're having. Yes. We're going to be on this Thursday, so it's a great program of inspiration and. I think that people watching this will be really blessed. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't want to miss it. Mother's Day on this Thursday. I mean, the special is this Thursday in, in the real life, in the real the life slots. Yes. And then on Sunday, special Mother's Day presentations of that same program at 2 p.m. and at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So mark your calendars, write them down. Don't, yes. don't miss those two. You can, always, you can always email us at family at ctvn.org and also Remember, as Norma just said, our prayer partners are always standing by to take your call. So call with, with us anytime you have a need and need somebody to stand with you. Today's scripture, Philippians 1, verse, verses 6, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. That's what God's doing in Cornerstone. He began this good work. He's going to perfect it. And he's doing that in your life too because he's the author and the finisher, finisher of our faith. So God, God, we're so glad that you are able to be with us today. Jason Gray is here to lead us in some song with Laugh Out Loud. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good fortune as I 
shake the dust off of my boots Yesterday I was an orphan Somehow today I belong to you Somehow today I belong to you Hormones are an essential part of our God-given biology. When they're doing good, what they're supposed to do, everything in us is going well. But when they're not, we can have some serious health issues. Dr. Salsano is the author of the book High Calling, and he shares helpful information regarding hormones on this week's Living Well. You know, there's a uh, a lot of commercials on TV that's talking about what they call low T. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've got low T, you know, testosterone, low testosterone. That is a culture, I guess a cultural uh, uh, kind of phenomenon that you see more and more of that. In your practice, okay. what do you think about hormone, this, hormone, this whole hormone issue? Yes, well I'll first say that low testosterone and I guess the one symptom that's caught the headlines in medical news is erectile dysfunction has probably been around pretty much consistently and hasn't really changed. There's probably not any significant uptick. It's just that we're more aware of it and we're more diagnosing it. And, and also, culturally, men are a little more uninhibited about coming to the doctor and talking about it. Mm -hmm. There was a time when it was an unmentionable thing. Mm -hmm. And not to, not to also um, say that we now have medications to help with erectile dysfunction and frankly with testosterone replacement. But in any case, it's been around, but we are more aware of it and we're diagnosing it. Interestingly, in men, the most common symptom of low testosterone is not erectile dysfunction, it's fatigue, followed by depression. See, estrogen in women, testosterone in men, 
And hormones in general, the whole nature of, of the hormone effect is it affects the total body. So the symptoms tend to be a little more spread out depend, and more so in one organ or another depending on the major effect. So it's a real issue. It's more out there than we think. We're becoming more aware of it and we're testing more for it. And thankfully in these days we have very good medications. Well, as, as you say, women have always gone through, quote unquote, the change of life, right. which is the hormonal changes, and then stabilized. And now the, uh, in the male side, I guess they're calling that ant anapause. Is that, does, it, does that <laughs> well, word mean anything? That's a new one to me, I gotta admit, Don. <laughs> but the truth is there's no such thing as male menopause. That's yeah. an urban legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, n women will go along making estrogen and then it just stops, it plummets. In men, there's a tendency for a slow decline. It's a little quicker in some men mm -hmm. than others, but men don't abruptly stop. And there's a case where it will, the curve is a little steeper, and these are the men who are diagnosed at a younger age. There are some, some other issues around men with uh, low testosterone, hypogonadism is the medical term we use. Mumps virus, believe it or not, one of the things it does is uh, it attacks the testicles and it destroys their hormonal capacity, mm. hormonal making capacity. Now we don't see much of that anymore because there's mumps vaccine has been available for some 50 years, but in men who predated that, uh, we do see that that probably is one of the issues that leads to it. Well, there's another issue that I wanted to ask you about while I had you is the whole idea of the thyroid. And I guess mostly hypothyroidism yes. when your thyroid is underproducing. That remains to be so un undiagnosed. Do you, do you see a lot of that? I do, and I test for it. I guess I test for it more so now than I did 20 or 30 years ago. Again, it's out there, it exists. A lot of people have, and especially actually um, the older generation have a condition we call subclinical hypothyroidism. That is, their blood levels are a little off, but their symptoms are really not that dramatic. I mean, we all feel a little tired, a little achy as we get older, I do. And they're not necessarily again gonna bring those issues to the doctor's attention. The debate, the debate is a little uh, hot about what do you do with this? Do you, if their lab's normal but they feel fine, do you treat it or do you not treat it? I believe the tendency in healthcare among physicians is leaning more towards treating it. Because if it is, if the blood work's abnormal, even though they don't have symptoms now, it's probably a sign that they're going to go into further decline. Is, is that, as you age, does that impacted? Uh, only in that the sense the thyroid gland which sits in the neck wraps around the larynx the voice box it's kind of an inno it's sort of a how shall I say it's a, an innocent bystander or it's subject to collateral damage we're always fighting infections coming down the throat mm -hmm. And the thyroid will often be attacked by viruses. There's a condition called thyroiditis, which I, I see once every couple of years, where the thyroid will just be attacked by infection. It'll weaken, it'll bounce back. But later in life, it's probably will start a decline. So it's a tendency, I guess I'd have to say, of just the longer you're around, the more likely you're going to accumulate one of these episodes and it's going to lead to a low thyroid. Is, is it safe to say that that's part of the body wearing out or starting to get in its, you know, its, yeah, its well, that's descent, true. I guess is the right word? <laughs> yeah, the, the body wears out. I, I know colleagues, and you probably have heard this adage is kind of floating around a lot that from the moment we were born, we start to die. Uh, that's probably a little bit of a hyperbole, but, but the truth is that you know, we're, our bodies are pre-programmed, and again, this goes back to original sin and the curse. 
we're pre-programmed to that end and the organs begin to to fail as we age is no question well we have we have hope though the hope is that uh, our new bodies our kingdom bodies will be perfect and we'll have no no issues with with disease or sickness yes absolutely uh, I will he will wipe away every tear all the issues of this life that absorb us all of our sufferings but we also have another hope we have a hope in this life that God can heal us or send us to a medical a practitioner like yourself who can help us yes. because we don't need to suffer silently. So if someone's suffering from something that they might be from the thyroid order, they don't even know what it is, you encourage them to go see their physician. Oh yes, doctors have a role now even as they did 2,000 years ago. But medicine today as opposed to in ancient times has been revitalized by the Christian faith. It's Amen. definitely uh, it's definitely a consequence of Western civilization and Christian Amen. civilization. Well thank you for coming and spending time with me and talking You're about welcome. these issues and uh, his book is called The High Calling. You can go on to, onto our website ctvn.org, find out more about it, get a copy for yourself. Always good to see the life story and the, and the truth about how God took you to a place that we really admire as a godly Christian physician. Yes. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Later on Real Life, Dr. Ron Moore begins a new teaching series on the seven minute word. And coming up next, the President of Christ for All Nations, Daniel Kalinda, with encouragement on how to live before you die. That's next on Real Life. There is really no greater joy in my life than to see my children and grandchildren safe and happy. When I was young, the world seemed slower and safer. You could turn on the television and not be embarrassed by what might come up on the screen. Then I found Cornerstone, a television network whose mission is to uplift and inspire that safe place that holds Christian family values at the forefront of what it does. And that's why I love Cornerstone, because I know I can leave the room and know that when my son is watching the kids programming, that the same values that my mom and dad placed in me are coming through the screen. Cornerstone is helping to make sure that the lasting legacy of faith and family values is instilled in our family and reinforced in our own lives with great teaching and preaching. They're here to support my family and yours 24 hours a day, seven days a week with prayer and programming that bring biblical principles to light. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. We have a big announcement. Drum roll, please. Sister to Sister is going to be its own 30-minute program. Woo! Starting May 7th at 10 a.m. And 2 p.m. And 9 p.m. And for your night owls like me, 2 a.m. That's right, sisters. More topics, more teaching, more guests, more fun. It's going to be great. So set your DVRs. Mark your calendar. It's Sister to Sister, debuting May 7th. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is their life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on It's Supernatural! He is the successor to Reinhard Bonnke as president for Christ for All Nations. Daniel Kalenda has literally seen millions come to faith in Jesus in crusade meetings around the world. His book, Live Before You Die, helps believers seek God's will and direction for their lives. You know, I love the title of your book, Live Before You Die. What, what, what was the motivation for, for titling this? Well, you know, the, the truth is that the original title was um, Discovering God's Will for Your Life. And I took that to the publisher. They said, you know, you got to come up with something more interesting than this. So I began, to, I began to think about what it was that was really at the heart of my message. And, you know, I think, I think um, you know, the movie Braveheart, when I was a kid, there was that movie, William Wallace, uh, the lead character, and that says something at the end, 
that I think summarizes it well. He said, every man dies, but not every man really lives. And what I came to, to understand, even as I was writing this book, is that the highest form of life possible is a life that's lived in the will of God. If you haven't discovered God's will for your life, if you're not following that, you don't know what it is to be alive. When you discover that thing that you are made for, that God created you for, you will, you will live every day of your life to its fullest. And that's what I wanted people to help people discover. That process of discovering, our, let's call it our destiny, yeah. for lack of a better word, is, is, is mysterious for a lot of people. Yeah. How did you get that? How did you find that place that you know God has put you? Well, you know, that, that's why I wrote the book, because I discovered there's two groups of people. Uh, people fall into one of two categories. Either they don't know what it is God wants them to do, but there's a burning desire in their heart to do something. Or number two, they have this dream, but they don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, several years ago, there was a guy that had come into our office. He was looking at one of the big pictures on the wall of a massive crusade. And he said to me, I've just been trying to figure out how to get from where I am to that. And I've discovered this is where a lot of believers are. If they know what God wants, they don't know what steps to take. And if they don't know what God wants, then they just feel confused. And so I wrote some of these, th this whole book. I mean, it's too much to unfold now, but it's, it's many steps from the Word of God, from personal experience, to help a person discover and fulfill what they were designed for. I guess the first step, though, if someone's watching and they don't know Jesus, yeah. they haven't entered into a relationship with God, that's, you're not going to, you're not going to, live the way God's chose for you to live unless you have that as a starting place. Yeah, I mean, that, that's absolutely true. The, when it comes to God's will, the first thing on God's agenda for every person is that they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because in Christ, all of the riches of God are available. Outside of Christ, my friend, if you're, if, if you're watching this right now and you are not a follower of Jesus, if you haven't been born again, my friend, there's, there's nothing in, that God has for you. You may pray, you may cry, you may, you may desire it, but the truth is the only place where the riches of God are available are in Christ. That's, right. that's why salvation is the starting point, that's as right. you said, for God's will. And that's so misunderstood, Yeah. especially in, in, the, in the culture here in the United States. We think God is a good God and he gives equally to all people and, and he, he wouldn't hold back anything from anybody. But you have to be in the family, if you will, to understand the position that Christ brings to us. Yeah, and he is a good God, and he, he does love everybody. Because of that, the Bible says, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave. What, he gave a new job, he gave a, a new wife, he gave a new car. No, he gave his son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in that, that one gift of God, all of the riches of heaven are available. And then this book comes into play. Yeah. After that decision's made, what's next? How do you get to that place of finding out what God wants? And I know you said it's, there's multiple <laughs> steps, but I want you to encourage people that there's more for them yeah. than just being saved. Sure. Well, the first thing I think is we need a renewed mind. And um, there, there's a lot of misconceptions that people have about God and about His will. So I, I take great care to help the person have a proper understanding of how God feels about them and how God views them and how God views their life. Once you have that foundation um, laid, then you can begin to address principles of, of fulfilling God's will. For instance, learning to hear God's voice. This is one of the big things I address in the book. You know, God's will, we often think of it as this grand end goal, this grand thing that we want to do, a destiny. Mm -hmm. What we fail to understand often is that God's will is fulfilled one day at a time, mm -hmm. one act of obedience at a time. You know, our life at the end is the sum total of many individual steps that have been taken. So if you can learn to hear God's voice in the little things, in the day-to-day -day things, through that, step by step, you can fulfill God's will for your life. Then you start building a capacity to understand and hear. Yeah. You know, and then once we've said yes to the little, he gives us another little challenge, exactly. another little step. You know, what he did in me is for a period in my life, he wouldn't let me walk past a piece of trash on the, on the, on the, on the sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, I'd walk past it, you know, all focused on what the future, you know, where I was going to. The Spirit of God would say, go back, pick that piece of trash up. Wow. And he did, I'll bet you for six months in my, in my walk, I had to go back and pick up a lot of trash. And that was just a little example of what you're talking about. Yeah. Spirit of God saying, do something, even though you go, well, you know, somebody's paid to pick that up. Yeah. But God was telling me to pick it up. So 
that. I, and obedience does what? Obedience gives you opportunity. Absolutely, and, you, and you're actually touching on another big theme that I cover in this book several times, which is that this, this, this issue of faithfulness. It's, it's a principle in scripture from beginning to end, and Jesus himself taught this. He that's faithful in little will be made ruler over much. You talked about uh, you're, you know, the Lord telling you to pick up the trash. The ministry that I lead today, Christ for All Nations, seeing millions of people come to the Lord every year. I started in that ministry, not as a preacher, not as the leader, not as an executive. I started in the warehouse. Hey. I was sweeping the floor, I was stocking shelves. I literally had the lowest job in the entire ministry. And that's where the Lord found me. And one step at a time, one level at a time, he lifted me up. And so if you're not, if you're not willing to be faithful in the little things, mm -hmm. like picking up the trash. I bet you, you were the best warehouse guy they, that was ever there. Well, I, I don't want to say that because there's some pretty good warehouse guys down there. I bet you there. were. But you know, I have noticed something that, that it's been almost a joke within the ministry that if you want God to bless you, go work in the warehouse. Because so many guys that started out down there today, the Lord has lifted them up because it's, there's just something about this principle. He that humbles himself will be exalted. The Lord is the one who puts down and lifts up. And he often looks for the people that are doing things that the world thinks are insignificant, but they're doing it faithfully. They're doing it with all their hearts. And the Lord loves to bless that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, and if you're watching and you say, what can I do? What are, what are you able to do? Well, ask the Lord for that next little step. I mean, it may be something in your church. It may be something that you can do with Cornerstone. Maybe you want to join our prayer team. Maybe God's telling you to join Norma's 700 prayer team. Just little things. He doesn't expect for you to pack up and go on a missions trip today, but he expects for you to take the next step of obedience. Yeah. And then what happens? After you take the little steps, faithful and little, he gives you more opportunity. Yeah, and, and this is another principle that, that, that I cover in the book, which is let's say you don't know what God wants you to do with your life and you're seeking him for that. This is what I suggest. Sow into someone else's ministry mm -hmm. and into somebody else's vision mm -hmm. as though it were your own. Like you said, mm -hmm. get involved with Cornerstone. Begin to, begin to be involved with this ministry as though it were your own ministry. And you know what will happen? As you sow, you will begin to reap a vision and a dream in your own life. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. We talk about it a lot when it comes to finances, but the truth is this principle works in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. Time, talent, treasure, yeah. and opportunity. So glad to be able to talk with you. You're Thank a blessing you. to me. I'm excited about being part of the ministry as we serve in your ministry and help you in any way we can. And look, go to our website, find out how to get a copy of this book. You'll, you'll be blessed by it. Live before you die. We'll get you to the right place to get it, and we'll be right back. Listen to the words of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, on April 30th, 1863. He knew our country needed to turn its eyes to our Heavenly Father in reverent prayer and thanksgiving. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace, and we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all of these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. May our eyes be opened and let us pray and fast for our nation. We have so much to be thankful for, but we have much also to repent of. Pray for this nation and pray for God's mercy. Look around you. Every day heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Thanks to you, Cornerstone Network is able to provide wholesome family programs that bring the good news of Jesus Christ to viewers around the world. Did you know that your support is making a difference in someone's life? Think about that. For 35 years, your gifts to Cornerstone have provided family-friendly television around the clock, entertaining and encouraging the entire family, bringing the love of God to a world in need. 
Thank you again. Your support is impacting lives with the love of Jesus Christ. Now it's time for our Bible study today. We begin a new series with Dr. Ron Moore, Senior Pastor of the Bible Chapel in McMurray, Pennsylvania. He calls his series Legacy, and he begins it now on today's Seven Minute Word. William Borden was a young man who had a passion to make an impact for Jesus Christ. Borden was not satisfied with a, with a second-rate, half-hearted Christian existence. He wanted to make his one and only life count for Christ. So when God called him to the mission field in China, he never hesitated. His friends thought he was absolutely crazy because Borden actually had it made. His family was very wealthy, and he was sent to the, the best schools around. He graduated from Yale, and he was in Princeton Seminary. But Borden understood that when God calls us, we have to do what God is calling us to do. And so he headed for China. Borden's first stop was Egypt for some language training. Unfortunately, he never left there. He contracted cerebral meningitis, and William Borden died at the age of 25. It's been written that as he was on his deathbed, a friend came to talk to him. And Borden took a piece of paper and he scratched out these six words as kind of a, an epitaph for his life. These words, no reserve, no retreat, no regrets. I'd like to use that as uh, an outline for our time today. No reserve, no retreat, no regrets. A life of no reserve is a full-out life for Jesus Christ. There's no holding back. There's no holding out. It's a life that doesn't hide behind a spiritual mask. It doesn't put on any pretense. A life of no reserve doesn't act one way in, in front of one set of friends and another way in front of another. A life of no reserve does not fondle secret sins when no one else is watching. A life of no reserve is not about pursuing a career that puts you ahead financially, but not selling out to what God has for you to make eternal impact. And when you live a life with no reserve, there is a passion that burns within you to follow hard after Jesus Christ. When you follow hard after Jesus Christ with no reserve, really you're only doing what Jesus himself did. Ephesians 5, 2 says, Jesus gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 says, Jesus gave himself for our sins to rescue us. Titus 2, 14 says, Jesus gave himself to redeem us. And 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6 says, Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all men. Philippians 2 says this, your attitude should be the same as Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself even to death on a cross. Jesus did not hold back. He did not hold out. He was obedient all the way to the cross. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. He died so we could live. There was nothing held back, and neither can we hold back on him. No reserve. Secondly, no retreat. In the Navy, when a captain was heading into battle and he knew that his soldiers had to fight, there was no going back, he would, he would nail the colors to the mask. He would put the flag up and he would nail it there so the flag could not be brought down and the flag of surrender up. And when the soldiers knew, when the sailors knew that the, the flag was nailed to the mask, they fixed their mind on winning the battle. For Christians, our flag is nailed to the mast. There is no retreat. We must be those who don't retreat from our marriage. We, we must be those who do not retreat from parenting our children. We must be those who never retreat from standing strong for Christ in the workplace. We cannot back down from standing strong for Christ among our, our circle of friends. We have to be those who live with no retreat. Remember what 1 Peter says, 
To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. There was no deceit found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he, when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed. The Christian life is a life of no retreat. No reserve, no retreat, no regrets. Every one of us, every one of us, we've done things in our past that we're not proud of. Every one of us had, have done some things that, that we would like to, to redo. We'd like to go back and fix. We'd like to go back and restore. We'd like to go back and, and make these things right. But today, right now, you can commit to God that from this day forward, you will live a life of no regrets. We can't fix the past, but beginning today, we can live a life that makes a, an eternal impact for Jesus Christ. And the decisions we make today will determine whether or not we live with regrets tomorrow. In one of William Borden's journals, he wrote these words, Say no to self and yes to Jesus every time. No to self and yes to Jesus every time. The writer to the Hebrews puts it this way. Let, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and completer, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that they will not grow weary and lose heart. So my challenge today is simply this. Let's live a life of no reserve. Let's live a life of no retreat. Let's live a life of no regret. Father, we pray that you would help us do that. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit who lives within us. Live a life full out for you. Live a life never backing down. Live a life, Lord, that is pleasing to you and that honors you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're thankful for that strong teaching, that strong word. On May the 1st, Christians observed the 63rd Annual National Day of Prayer. Communities all over the United States came together to pray for our government, our families, our military, and much more. I was invited to our local National Day of Prayer to pray for our nation's media and businesses. I'm, I'm here with Johnny uh, Clements. Mm -hmm. And we're from, you're from K-Love Radio here in the Pittsburgh area. That's right, 98.3 K-Love and 101.9 K-Love, a, a lot of stations all over. And where we are, you can't see where we are, but we're here for the National Day of Prayer in Monroeville, That's right, here Pennsylvania. at the Community Park. We're just so blessed to have so many different churches here together, mm -hmm. coming together as, as one body and one and all over the country, obviously, obviously right. the National Day of Prayer. It's great that we have this day to uh, celebrate uh, the Word of God. And that's, that's what this is. This is coming together across denominations, across different areas, and just lifting up to Jesus some of the issues and some of the concerns and some of the blessings that he's given us. That's right. And, and you know, we're talking about the power of prayer. I know, uh, Cornerstone, you guys pray over everything that comes into your mm -hmm. station. Same thing with Caleb. When we get a prayer, we make sure. I mean, that's very important to us. We know about the power, so we take it very seriously. This is not an idle exercise. We're not doing it because we've always done it. We're not doing it because it's a tradition. We do it because God is inclining his ear to us tonight. He searches our hearts and he listens to us to those prayers that are prayed in humility and faith. We come to you, Father, not in our authority, not in our position, but because of the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that because of the blood of Jesus, we can pray for our brothers and sisters that are in business here, in this area, Father, in this part of Pennsylvania, God. We pray that you'll pour out upon them a blessing, Lord. And we ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that it's not what we do or say, it's what you do that counts, God. And Lord, we ask for your glory to fall down upon us, Lord, 
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Tomorrow on Real Life, managing your debt so it doesn't manage you on Real Money. Arlene Williams has another great recipe for your family in the at-home kitchen. And the fulfillment of caring for a child through foster parenting. That's tomorrow on Real Life. You know, it was a real blessing to be there with uh, brothers and sisters from all kinds of different denominations during the National Day of Prayer. And to have that unity together to pray for our country and to watch the Lord working in our behalf, no matter what the denomination, no matter where the age or uh, anything, we were just praying in unity. And that's what we do on real life every day. We close every program with prayer. We have, we have some prayer requests, but I've got a couple of praise reports. Yes. I, wa I, wanna, I just want to report to you. Lily called her daughter-in-law, Tracy, had cancer all over her body. Lily prayed when uh, she was in the hospital when Tracy was in the hospital, after a short time, the doctors came and announced that Tracy was cancer-free. Think about that, the prayer of God mm -hmm. to get cancer-free. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, one more for me. Uh, a lady called, doesn't want us to use her name. She, she called in today and said she was so thankful for the prayers for her partner. She said that they've helped her through continued life circumstances. So, mm -hmm. Sometimes that's how it is, Pastor. It's, mm -hmm. it's God working in the details of, of yeah, our lives. Yes, it is. He's the God of the details. He is the God of the details. Sure. These, these are people that called during our family time, which we just completed. Doris called last week, made a pledge believing for a job. She mailed her pledge in right away, uh -huh. and she received the phone call for a job offer right that's after that. Yay. That's awesome. awesome. This sister made a pledge of $1,000. She sent her seed of faith in, believing her home would sell. Yeah. Two days later, her home sold. Hallelujah. Wow. And then he, Hallelujah. Jesse called to give a praise report that her grandson has been off drugs for eight months now, and he's clean. Praise, praise God. The Lord. Praise, Amen. God. Praise, Amen. The Lord. Amen. praise the Lord. Well, we just have a couple minutes. I would like for us to pray for all of those who called in during the uh, family time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of the... How many? 8,000 people who called yes. in for prayer. Mm -hmm. And also for the partners who joined us. New partners mm -hmm. and some of our partners have been with us for many, many years. Many. Could, could we pray together for those? Amen. Let's yes. hold hands. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you want to lead us in this prayer? Father, we thank you for the you, thousands of people that have been touched yes. through our family time. And Lord, for the many that have made pledges May they with expectancy believe you're going to give seed into the hand of sowers. And for every request, we thank you for miraculous answers to prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for healing this lady who has a problem with her right arm. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a lot of pain. And if she's one of those or if it's a new person, whatever. We thank you for that word, Lord. Yes, God. And Lord, I pray for everybody who came to know you as their Savior during these yes. last two weeks, God. Everyone who confessed you as Lord and Savior. Father, root them in, in good ground. Send them your word, Lord. I pray you'll send somebody across their path to lead them and to encourage them. Yes. Father, we, we come against the devil in their lives in Jesus' name. And speak peace, healing, and, and, and salvation in Jesus' name. And we thank you for that, Lord. That's the miracle that we all ask you to do more and more of, Lord, through this ministry. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, exciting hearing all the good reports. Yes. yes. God's yes. faithful. He met us in our need. He meets you in your need. Let's end today's program with Danielle Ward as she sings, appropriately enough, You've Been Faithful. That's right.